Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here and I am the Audiophiliac. But today, I want to tell you about my home theater. Uh, I used to be a movie theater projectionist for a really long time. I started out at a little theater on 12th Street called Cinema Village. It's still there, amazingly enough. Then I moved to the Murray Hill on 34th Street and I finished up my run, my very long run as a, as a theater projectionist at the Baronet Coronet on 59th Street. So, Baronet Coronet was the best of those theaters and uh, it was 600 seats in the Coronet and um, it was my domain. I controlled the sound, I controlled the picture, I controlled everything really. And um, it was fun. It was, it was a lot of work but it was also fun. But you know the thing is I used to make up intermission music uh, I used to program intermission music for those theaters, for all of them. And I used to do, sometimes I'd play uh, music that was sort of a, a, a musical pun to the, to the film. Like when I ran The Exorcist, <clears throat> I ran, uh, as soon as the picture was off the screen, I ran The Beatles singing, She's Got the Devil in Her Heart. And when I ran um, some George Romero movie, uh, I ran... Uh, Alice Cooper's I Love the Dead, you know, that kind of stuff. But usually it wasn't that kind of, it wasn't funny. It was just uh, music that I thought complemented the film. And if it was a very serious film, uh, I would run, uh, you know, some kind of classical music that was in that same mode. And the thing I found so interesting was that the ushers that clean the theater in between shows, they would complain when I would run classical music because uh, they thought it was boring and blah, blah, blah. I'd say, yeah, but it, it kind of fits the film. That's why I'm running it. And the thing was that if that film stayed in the theater for more than a week or two and they heard that same music over and over again, they started to get into it. It was that repetition of hearing it seven, eight times a day. They started to follow the music and they would sometimes ask me what it was so that they could get it for themselves. So I, I found that amazing and I made some of those guys uh, really appreciate classical music or jazz. I mean, also would play jazz depending on the film. And it was a similar thing that at first they complained about it and then they got into it, some of them. One of them actually became a real jazz hound. I mean, that guy was really into Monk and Mingus and really out there stuff. He, he got into it because he kept hearing it at, at the theater, at the Baronet Coronet. So anyway, during this period, especially at the Baronet Coronet, this is in the 90s, um, is when digital uh, sound systems came into movie theaters. And there were three basic systems. There was the DTS system, there was a Dolby system, and there was a Sony system called SDDS, Sony Dynamic Digital Sound, or something like that. And I think it, at various points I had all three, or at least two of the three on my projectors. And uh, DTS, in my opinion, was by far the best because it was the most robust because those systems, the, the DTS system, had a, uh, a, a, D, a DVD that ran in sync with the projector. So no matter how beaten up the film print was, uh, the sound coming off the DVD was always pristine. The Dolby system was definitely the most fragile because its signal was basically along the edge of the film which came in contact with the sprockets in the projector. And as it would wear, uh, the information coming off the film was kind of iffy and the Dolby system would revert to analog. There was always an analog backup on the print, an analog soundtrack printed on the print. And it did, when the Dolby system was losing it, literally, uh, it would revert to the analog uh, soundtrack. So, uh, but it was interesting. I mean, I, it, it definitely upped the overall, those three systems when they worked well, uh, sounded better clearer, more dynamic, lower noise than the all analog systems and uh, actually some 70 millimeter films had magnetic stripe uh, printed on them so it was a, like, like a tape recorder running through the projector. Um, and those sounded really good but the digital systems sounded better. But it, you know basically I'm just thinking about how much fun it was to hear sound uh, in those movie theaters that I controlled. Um, and hearing in that music that I programmed for those theaters, hearing uh, it played over uh, a sound system that wasn't, you know, ultimately like an audio file system, not, not even close. They usually used Alltech A7 uh, speakers. 
Um, but when I heard that music in a room, in a movie theater that held 600 people, um, it sounded more real. And I started to get this, started to get through my thick skull that sound, uh, when you hear it in a space that's appropriate for that kind of music, it sounds more real. It isn't the fidelity of the recording so much. It's that the room itself, with its reflections and size and scale, makes it sound real. The recording itself is is what it is, but when you hear it in a big room, it sounds more like you were hearing live music in a big room. So, uh, I, I, I had a lot of really awful things happen to me in my years as a movie theater projectionist, but in the sum total of my, my projectionist career, it was fun. Certainly in retrospect, it was a lot of fun because I got to hang out and be around a lot of film people, especially at Cinema Village, my first theater job. A lot of the people that worked there were NYU film students and I used to run their student film sometimes after the theater closed. And I remember one time, uh, um, you know, the theater would close for the, the regular day. And then whoever was in the audience for that last show, the, the, the people that worked at the theater would say, hey, you want to hang out and watch some NYU student films? And the other people would say, yeah, sure, why not? You know, so they would hang out. One time, uh, as the, the, the regular show ended, who was in the theater but Tom Waits? And one of the kids says to the Tom Waits, hey, Tom, you want to hang out for these student films? He's like, yeah, sure, I'll hang out here. So he, he hung out for like a couple of hours watching films. And because he was there, this was 16 millimeter, by the way, not video. These were film films. Um, people, the students were bringing more and more films because Tom was sitting there watching all of them. So it was probably ended at like 3 o'clock in the morning. I wanted to go home. I was there since noon. But anyway... Um, Cinema Village was probably the most fun theater because it was in the village and I ran midnight shows of like John Waters movies, Pink Flamingos, Female Trouble, that kind of stuff. It just had a great vibe. It was a really objectively a pretty crappy theater, long narrow box. It was a single screen at that time. It was a, it's a triple theater now, but then it was just this long narrow theater with 266 seats. But it was a fun place. It had great energy to it. Um, Anyway, I'll talk more about projection and my projectionist years if you guys would seem interested. Um, but for now, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Comes up more or less daily. Come back tomorrow, watch another.